following Fukushima and if you're on YouTube you've probably seen their videos we have Kevin Blanche and Miss Milky the Clown on the line with us and before I get to them I was going to do a quick update but instead um, you guys have an idea of where to see some of these links now um, there hasn't been anything new with the earthquakes in Japan today uh, but there were a couple of stories on any news that I wanted to uh, just hit up and have you guys go and look at the links later. One was there was an alert at Los Alamos yesterday. Um, there was a container explosion and a release of gas. We haven't heard yet what the gas was. Um, they did tell everyone to stay in their houses around the area. Um, another report, NPR says it's okay if your skin gets burned from radiation. There's no risk of illness, which is complete BS. And the third story was the radiation is so high at reactor two and three now that no one can work there. So check out those stories on any news today. Uh, Kevin is a financial expert, educator, PhD. He has cancer. In fact, he is on his way to the hospital right now to find out what the status is of some tests that he had done yesterday. His father was an atomic veteran, and he also died of cancer. Um, Kevin, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yesterday, Any News had posted a radio interview with um, Dr. Helen Caldicott, and she said there's something new in the history of medicine that is happening at Fukushima. 30% of children tested have thyroid lumps. Now, that's really early. That's within the first year, and that's unheard of. And at the same time, a Freedom of Information Act release showed that the NRC was talking about infants in California received 40,000 microsieverts as a thyroid dose, and that was just from Reactor 1 and just in the early days of the crisis. I read the transcript, and I encourage everybody else to do so as well. Um, give us your crimes against humanity list again, and who needs to be strung up for this? Well, my, number one. Number one, the TEPCO, no doubt about it. Number one, as they downplayed it. I think the key thing that people need to realize about the Fukushima meltdown, the morning that it happened, I went psychotic about it, put up a really radical video about it. I knew that it was a disaster. and Everybody's like, how did you know? I'm like, because it was a nine-point earthquake. I've been waiting for this to happen for decades. I knew that they couldn't handle it. Well, as they spray water over the top of it, it doesn't matter if the plume goes into the air or if it goes... The radiation was pushed into the Pacific. I mean, more plutonium that's ever been released in the history of the world was pushed into the, into the Pacific. And so it's in the food chain, and it doesn't matter if it's an air plume. And the crimes against humanity list, TEPCO number one, Japanese government, the NRC, which is, is a joke, you know, a lot of people don't know that Jacko, who's head of the NRC, is a gift job. He is a brownie. He is a brownie. He has no background. It was a gift job by Obama to Harry Reid. Harry Reid's a Mormon from here, who I know personally. It was a gift job. He has no background. The NRC is crimes against humanity. So is the IEA. But I think the, I think the media. And it's not that just that we did not know. I can prove, I can document that they intentionally, with malice, now played it. CNN, Sanjay Gupta, the producers of Anderson Cooper's show, Jim Walsh from MIT, they are the very top of my list. But, you know, Sanjay Gupta spent all these years in credibility. We're talking a man that was nominated to be the Surgeon General, the most trusted news in America that hundreds of millions of people have watched. And he intentionally played it on two Saturdays after. This happened, his Saturday morning health show, which millions watched, millions. He did everything in his power. He interviewed a doctor from Japan, and she said a little plutonium is good for you. Then he showed two people. He had a freelance journalist from Michigan on there 
Chinese, and I was laying in my bed in 86 when Chernobyl happened. I thought it was all poor. So here a few years ago, I went over there, and there's nothing. Every all oh, They're all perfectly fine, which is such a lie. The entire region is still condemned. It is vacated. And uh, so he goes on and says, shows, and everybody's worried about the fish and eating the fish, and he shows a picture of two man fish and holding up a fish in Chernobyl, which they're... The fish that are in Chernobyl right now, there's no fish that breed. So you have catfish that are, you know, 10 feet long, the same because they've killed them all. Have you ever seen, if you've ever watched any of the documentaries out of Chernobyl that are exist that. today? Yeah. And he's trying to say people fish there. People don't even set foot in there. Mm-hmm. The Ukraine, young people are dying in droves. And that was one core meltdown that Gorbachev entombed after how many days? And Fukushima has raged in the Pacific for months. And months, and it's three, maybe four full full meltdowns. These people should be in prison. Well, what was so upsetting to me is when the journalists went to the site and were allowed to film up close. You know, you see things like shower curtains catching water from leaking pipes, and things are fixed with duct tape and string and plastic bags and vacuum hoses. I mean, what is going on at that site? Do they not have any money? Are they having yeah, trouble with work? It's a workers? Scene. Well, I think what the, my personal belief on this, because now the Obama administration will tell you this. They sent, a lot of people don't know this, the United States uh, Air Carrier, they have a nuclear ship that's full of these oceans, and that's all they do is nuclear cleanup. They're back in they've never been used. Obama administration claims it was sent and deployed to Fukushima within days, and the international treaties between Japan and the United States would not let it in their waters. That's what they'll tell you, which I believe there's probably a lot of truth to that. And the Japanese obedient society, I think they're so prideful over there. And the way they are, they're like, we'll handle this. Well, you know how their mentality is. And I have people from Japan who tell me exactly this. And I think it's the Japanese and their, you know, their psychology that uh, we can handle. And they can't handle it. They cannot handle it. It's obvious they can't. They have no no knowledge to handle it. They have no economic means to handle it. And so it's make it up duct tape as you go. And the world community has not stepped in, and, you know, which is obscene. If the world community would have stepped in, they could have blotted this thing right off the get. You know, trapped all that water as they were spraying it over the top. The thing that really outrages me the most is when the plume went and the, all the reporters backed out to Tokyo. They were there for six days. I'm screaming my head up. Walsh is on TV saying, oh, it's okay. And I remember Anderson Cooper asking Walsh, point blank, do I need to get out of here? And he's obviously, he had no clue. And he's like, oh, yeah, but I'm screaming my head off. Watch it. Get out, get out, get out. And he, uh, they backed off to Tokyo the next day. And as soon as the wind shifted over the mainland, all crews, CNN, NBC, BBC, ABC, CBC, they all vacated Tokyo and came home. I remember they were that. only there for well, that, you know. So you don't think they knew? Oh, they knew, and they continued to downplay it. Uh, this is Jules. Can I add a couple more people to the crimes against sure. humanity? Um, yeah, absolutely. I would say uh, Hillary and Bill Clinton for tamping yeah. down on internet rumors and stopping all the news pretty much out of there, as well as uh, Mr. Barry Obama, um, who yeah. launched the war on uh, the attack on Libya. And then left for South America just as Fukushima happened. Yeah, did he yeah, stay down there for like two weeks too? Yes, he did. Yep. And said there was yeah. nothing to worry about. Yeah, isn't that something? You know, children living. Yeah, you can actually look at those YouTube. The, the uh, YouTube has those videos from the early days of the crisis. If you want to go back and look at them, where where these guys are interviewed, and and Anderson Cooper looked pretty scared, if I remember. Yeah, and Anderson Cooper, you know. I'll get the thing with Anderson Cooper, you know, Gloria Vanderbilt's son, you know, he he doesn't have a clue. You know, he's wrote her country. He's not a very bright, intelligent person. He's really not. And it's obvious that he had no clue. I don't blame him with Malcolm. No. I blame his producers. I blame the Ricky Corporate Media Machine that's running that show, whoever that may be. And my personal belief, because I've, I've thought about this in my mind over and over, why was this downplayed? I believe we have state-run television. I honestly believe, you know, the Japanese government have already admitted that they downplayed it intentionally to protect their economy. 
I believe it came right from the top. I believe it came right from the White House. And I believe there were freaking emails and, you know, Secret Service agents who showed up to producers and had conversations with them. I honestly believe them. To, you know, anything to try to save this freaking economy, because that's all they, you know, care about, which is such a fallacy. I wanted to introduce to you Miss Milky the Clown. She has been making news updates about Fukushima almost every single day since it started. And Chris Busby even emailed her and said that he loved her videos. And if he could make videos, he would do them exactly the same way. I am so happy to have her on today. Um, Miss Milky. When you hear stories like what NPR posted yesterday, that getting burned from high-level radiation exposure poses no health risk, I mean, how do you feel about that? You're basically giving out better information than national public radio. Uh, it drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. Drives all of us crazy. <laughs> You know, and I've gotten like so numb to it. It's like you just, I just started to turn it off, you know? Have you had problems with uploading any of your videos because of the, the content, like taking um, content from NHK and Kyoto and some of the Japanese news agencies? You know, ironically, no, I have not. I can't not believe that. I don't know. There must be some little angel looking out for me for that. But I will say, you know, back when I could use the uh, Creative Commons before that privilege got yanked from me, uh, people who did use it, they got hit with copyright stuff. So I don't know what's going on as far as, you know, me being hit with, you know, copyright from NHK or whatever. Right. I saw your video about um, Reactor 4 yesterday, and, and we're going to drop a link to that video into the chat room so um, other people can look at it too, but can you give us kind of a synopsis of, uh, of what was said in the video about Reactor 4? Yeah, they're talking about the spent fuel pool, uh, obviously an elevated location, and the foundation of the building is crumbling, and they're talking about the um, technical aspects of removing the spent fuel rods and how basically insurmountable of a task it is. And uh, TEPCO, the Japanese government, and um, anyone in the nuclear industry knows that that is top priority number one to remove those before another earthquake hits or the building collapses. And, um, you know, the technical aspects of doing it are just like, you can't do it. <laughs> I think it needs to be said that uh, a lot of people don't know this, and every single reactor in the United States with spent fuel rods are stored on site, which we were lied to all through the 70s. This is, oh, we have a plan. We have Yucca Mountain. We have Yucca Mountain. We have Yucca Mountain. And I live right here. I'm looking right now as I speak out over a, mar a viral solution. You can see it from the hill where I'm at where they want to store this waste. And the spent fuel rods are stored on all of these facilities. People don't know that. You know, and like I said, it's a, it's a catastrophe waiting to happen because they're just laying there in pools. And they don't know, nobody, they, the NRC and the agencies, they'll pretty straight up. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle it. They try to reuse them, which they say, oh, 95% reuses. I'm like, yes, so what? You have 5% of 40 years waste stored in pools just laying there? You know, that's right. the same and in the United States as Japan. And they were talking about, you know, should they even get like a crack in the spent fuel pool um, you know, the water would leak out and immediately people would die and they, they basically said it would be, quote, unquote, the end. I and think that it's happened in some slight situations before. I really believe that it has happened, small leakage. You know, Miss Milky Clouds probably can verify this on these uh, small, you know, accidents, so-called small accidents we have every, seems like, month in this country. Nobody's been watching for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of the spent fuel pools that we have here are all full at each one of these reactor sites. San Onofre has 4,000 tons of it. Um, Vermont Yankee, their, their spent fuel pools are all full, and, there, and there's no pay, place to put it. Well, it, right it, now, go ahead. Yeah, even, even the logistics of removing the spent fuel rods, they have to be encased in water, and they're talking about the crane and how it's broken, the overhead crane, 
and so they can't even lift these rods out because they don't have a crane that could put them in a tank of water, and they've got to remove all the debris on top of them. I mean, it's just insurmountable. And here we're going to build more when they can't handle the ones we have. Yep. And who's going to be left to attend to all of these spent fuel rods for millions of years? No yeah. one. No one's now. No one has for 40 years. So, it's, I mean, the, the problem yeah. is right here. I tell you, you know, we like to talk about the future and future generations, and which we should. But it's right here right now. Every, all our fears from the 70s, all our fears from the 80s, you know, when we protested, and this country was a rabbit about this, and this country actually gave a damn about the environment, it's right here right now. It is in our face. It is happening. All the fears that we feared, you know, from the China Syndrome forward, the movie, you know, and all us environmentalists here in Utah, from Wallace Stegner to, you know, you go off the whole list of them who fought and fought with passion and who stopped this thing, you know, from our great governor, Scott Matheson, who was a downwinder who died in 1950, who, by the way, was a liberal in Utah, the most beloved politician this state ever had. Our courthouse I'm looking at right now is named after him. And he, uh, you know, all those fears that all those people had, they are right here, right now. They are happening right as we speak. I am living proof of it, you know, full of leukemia. This, uh, this leukemia center that I'm headed to, at LDS, I'm right here by the Salt Lake Temple right next to it. I'm turning in the corner right now to go over there. It is chock full of 30-year-olds, which this disease was unheard of in 30-year-olds. It is overwhelming. With there, There's new admits of young females and mouths. This is a working-class man's disease around benzene or whatever. How do all these young men and females get it? And the doctors here will tell you just what I say. Dr. Hansen, he'll say, we are all downwinders. That's his exact quote out of his mouth. Is his father and his younger brother both died of thyroid cancer right here. You know, thyroid cancer is the predecessor. It is the early thing. Richard Miller's book proves it. As he wrote under the clouds right here at the University of Utah in 1986, he proves that the early signs, just like you say, showing up the third, he proved that in 1986 for 40 years with the scientific data. So the thyroid is the predecessor. We know and you, leukemia is the aftermath. USA Today ran a story um, about a month and a half ago saying that doctors were baffled at the recent increase in thyroid cancer over here, where they used to see one or two patients a year with it. Now they're seeing a couple a week. Why aren't doctors tuned into this Fukushima thing? They are here. I'll tell you what, they are here in Utah because, you know, we've been the anti-new capital of the world for years because of the open-air test. We're right next to us. As I grew up as a boy here, this state was rabid about nuclear. Everybody knew. The kids knew. We all were taught it, you know. And so we all know it now. The state's a bunch of, you know, they're just like the rest of contemporary America, a bunch of ignorant fools. But doctors here will tell you at the University of Utah, at LDS, and there's some brilliant doctors, and, boy, they talk about it. I have conversations with these doctors daily, and they, they thyroid cancer is off the hook, and they know it, and they know. And they, you know, like I said, they will say we're downwinders. They know. They know. So they are talking about it here, you know, and they are trying to get printed in journals. But, it's again, it's the popular opinion in America that, you know, we're a bunch of babbling morons, you know, that people people don't hear want to hear. They don't want to tune into it. They can't deal with it. They can't cope with it mentally. They can't understand it mentally. So they just turn it off. You know, it's really, you can break it down to a way that it's easy to understand, and it's basically, you know, the radiation is bad for you, and there are things that you can do to minimize it in your life and mitigate for it, and it basically just means healthier living. But we are at the bottom of the hour, and we're going to take a short break, and we will be back with my guest, Kevin Blanche, and Ms. Milky the Clown. Yeah, you've done great work. I, I think your war work is award winning. I honestly do. I think as time looks back, I think that you're probably going to be viewed in a documentary type way. Your videos are incredible. Uh, I don't know what else to do. Like, you got to do something, you know? Yeah, I mean, at least we try. You know, that's all we can do. Kevin, at this point, one year later, is there anything that can be done expeditiously at this point to stop this mess over there? Concrete, boron, no. sand, lead, or no. is it too late? 
for any it's too late. The genie's it's it's too late. The genie's out of the bottle. You know, Gorbachev entombed you know Chernobyl. What was that day? Seventy eight or eighty seven or something in there. Entombed. Which is the answer? To entomb these things is the answer. And but the problem with Fukushima. The problem with Fukushima is they came up with this idea that you know these these cores. I argue with people all the time. The day that I happened, I had. You know, Arnie Gunderson, who's a phony, by the way, in my sight. I had Walsh in my sight. I had all these guys in my sight, NRC in my sight, arguing with me, arguing with me, telling me I didn't know a hydrogen plume from a nuclear plume. And I'm like, are you kidding me? These cores are fractured on impact. They cannot handle I knew they were fractured. So the whole time, if they would have, which this has been a debate going in this country for 30 years about water containment systems around here. The debate went in the 70s. They could have went in there. They could have built a, you know, a bladder really quick. You know, it would have been a major project. Hell yes, would have been worth it. Hell yes, they could have built a bladder system around the thing, and they could have regurgitated that water as it sprayed over the top and knocked down them plumes and in there, and it would have saved millions of lives. But they didn't, and it's on. There's no saving it now. There's no, you can go in and entomb it now, you know, and I guess maybe it'll stop from. Reactor 4, which I've been saying for how many months now, the Reactor 4, because I have two friends from Hong Kong that are freelance journalists who are brilliant, by the way, and they keep base there. You really keep quiet and keep to themselves because they're in fear. They, they're, they're in fear of being arrested over there. And they, they've been, they're the ones who released a lot of this early video content. And they say exactly what I'm saying, that Reactor 4 was in a freaking meltdown a long, long, long time ago. They released footage of when it blew and that you know i posted that video milk this milky clowns posted that video how many months ago was that and now they're saying that oh react four is fine when it's never been fine and so it's been pouring into the ocean so i don't think there's anything that can be done you know maybe the human body trying to adapt to radiation which all the scientists which by the way Almost all the scientists that have ever been done on this are right here at my university we were state university of utah you know, Richard Miller, Leonard Byrd, these are all Utahns, you know, in their books. And they should prove and document, undocumented. These are scientists who spent their entire lives. John Goff from Berkeley. You know, those people, Rachel Carson, you know, the ran and raid. And like I said, it used to be in vogue to be a tree hugger in the 60s and 70s. Now we're a bunch of losers, you know. So, you know, people used to listen to people like that. And, you know, it isn't crackpot science. It is hardcore, in concrete. It's not like the science isn't out there. Mm-hmm. And Richard Miller's last word, we are all down winders. And he used to talk all the time about an accident. And the only saving an accident was total entombment immediately. And we didn't do it. So the genie's out. It's out. It's in the food chain. It's dust in the wind. It's in the air. You know, people can do whatever they want. They can go cocoon into a freaking room with tinfoil around it and watch it. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. We have to eat. And it is in every organic what's organic going to do you when you have to water those crops and it's in the water mm-hmm. you know so the genie is out of the bottle there is i don't think there is one thing that can be done right now i really do not i mean we can entomb number four i guess you know maybe but i believe that if number four has been leaking radiation into the pacific the entire time you know i used to tell people these things in the early days of this cork fractured and i still have people arguing at this day you don't know the core crap bullshit is proof tepco admits it the japanese government admit it it wasn't the tsunami you know it made it worse absolutely these these reactors cannot handle a seven point earthquake they cannot handle an f3 tornado and so it, it cracked the core on impact and there is no bladder system around any of these things none of them they're all set up next to major waterways because it takes so much water to cool them and it pours, you know, their idea to dump water over the top, and everybody thinks, oh, that's secure. Yeah, it saved a lot of Japanese lives. It did. It saved millions in, J- in Japan, probably. But it killed worldwide. It's going to kill hundreds of millions because that's the greatest food basket on Earth. Mm-hmm. Greenpeace has tuna 4,000 miles out. They're the, by the way, they're the only real environmental agency that does any work. The Sierra Club, the rest of them, you know, they're debating societies who just suck up our money. They don't do any work. Mm-hmm. They don't do anything. You know, they're debating societies. When it actually comes time to do something, they do shit. So I don't believe there's anything that can be done at Fukushima. I think the genie is out of the bottle. I honestly believe that. You know, and I'm just saying that because I'm a pessimist, because I'm a very optimistic person. 
I think that's just the facts that they are. Well, you know, I, I read something that kids in 1963, during the height of peak testing, the SAT scores dropped 12%, and at the height of Fukushima, the rates were a 1,000 times higher than that year. And, you know, I'm so worried about these kids and what this is doing to their brains. To their My mom says the best, and she's 83 years old. She's been a widow for a long time. My dad looked just like Elvis with muscles. Guy never had a cavity in his life. I am serious, and he dies from this. He's in time. I used to tell people this story, and they looked at me like I had three eyeballs. You know, and they're like, what? My uncle was a general at the Pentagon at the time, his younger brother, who actually quit the NFL to go on the Air Force, and, you know, his older brother stood on Omaha Beach on D-Day. You ought to hear these old guys, and they're alive. You ought to hear them talk about this. And, I t and I'm the one. I filed so many lawsuits for the free these videos that a lot of people watch. I'm responsible for clear back in the 90s. And then this comes out, oh, they really did human guinea pig 40,000 men out there. Oh, Kevin isn't freaking just Lulu nutso. Oh, God, oh, all these books have been written, you know. And then Leonard Bird, who I knew personally, who wrote a magnificent book, by the way, as he was dying, it's called Folding Paper Cranes, 2002, who was a University of Utah guy who was an atomic veteran, who, which is an incredible book. It'll make, it'll, it'll make you cry. But... You know, these guys had been ranting and raving for years. John got up at Berkeley had been ranting and raving about it for years, and everybody thought we were nuts. Well, the Internet. Thank God for the Internet. You know, and here it comes out, boom, and everybody's like, oh, they really did human guinea pig their own man. You know, and if you look at Richard Miller's map, that Richard Miller did 40 years of scientific data about he took the wind patterns that the government released. They didn't know what the jet stream was in those days. And there's places in upstate New York, there's places in Michigan, there's places in Florida that have higher thyroid and leukemia cancers even here in Utah. Now I wonder because that's where it rained the next day. Yeah. And the, people are not even ignorant about how many tests were done out there. Way more than people think. Way more than people think. Hundreds and hundreds of open air tests. And like I said, Scott Madison, the governor who died here in 1983, leukemia, his kindergarten class down there in southern Utah, they would go outside and watch it, and they were, you know, 250 miles away. I think they said there was 18 kids in his uh, first grade class, and 16 were dead by 55 of leukemia. You know, so we as Utahns understood this dynamic, but as Richard Miller proves in his map that we are all downwinders, and just because it happened right next door to Utah doesn't mean that somebody in New York doesn't get it because it's where it rained the next day. It's like Chernobyl. The highest traces of Chernobyl, you know where it's at? The U.K. and Scotland. Yeah. That's where the jet stream was flowing the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, after Fukushima, Northern Californians, Canadians, Vancouver, that's where the jet streams have been running. Because you know, these jet streams have got into this pattern. We had this mild winter. Well, you know, there's plenty of people up in British Columbia that are monitoring this. You know, there's a guy, uh, Miss Milky Clown probably knows this guy that drives around all the time. I sent him some money. And uh, he's got a Geiger counter every time it rains all over Canada. He's done great work. They're, they're incredible videos, and they scare the living bejesus out of you. You know, well, I'm a little concerned, too, how the radiation might be affecting the weather patterns that we're having, too, because the snow is not sticking around. It's like the ground is warm. And any time it snows here, it kind of turns almost to like a little crispy ice layer. But everything melts underneath it. None of the streams are frozen. None of the ponds are frozen. And last night, we had a storm move through our area. And there were like exploding lightning balls in the sky over my head. And we had tornadoes to the north of us and to the south of us. And, and we're not in a tornado area. And, you know, a week and a half or two weeks before this, there were 50 tornadoes. And that was before the season even started. Well, and that's the problem here. That rads heat things up. We have extreme weather patterns. Our governor here, you know, John Huntsman was our governor, who's a progressive, by the way. You know, don't be fooled by that elephant. He's probably the biggest liberal this state ever seen. I'm looking at his name on the wall right now. I'm at the Huntsman Center right now. But anyway, he... He rant and raved and carry on about the same subject. Now, well, he quit us. He quit us and went to work for the Obama administration. And he appointed our governor, this Herbert guy, who he will tell you point blank that global warming is a farce and the earth is 4,000 years old. He will tell you that to your face. So 
if these extreme weather patterns, as we proved this earth, if it isn't as obvious as the nose on your face by just what you said on the tornadoes. Now, we have F5 tornadoes on the ground for, you know, 13 miles in Alabama and North Carolina places that have never happened. What happens when one of those hits a nuclear facility? And it can't happen. The guy I loved has gone away. I'm gonna make a, a change today. All right, we are back for the last segment of News Radio, and Jules had some interesting weather observations she made um, back in March when the reactors blew. Yeah, we were talking on the break, and, um, you know, Fukushima, I knew from the very beginning that this was going to affect us on a huge scale. I mean, I've, I've watched nuclear power since I was a kid, and Three Mile Island happened. So when this first happened, I went to... Um, Google Earth and launch the weather layer, and I could see plainly as day. I mean, it was early March. The Pacific, Northern Pacific Ocean, was cold, and you could see the cloud formations forming over the heat that was spewing out of the melting down reactors, and they were forming these backward sea formations over the ocean that looked like it was spinning up a hurricane. And I could watch them. They were blowing toward our west coast, hitting California. California was having these wicked storms. Um, and it was back when the EPA was still doing, you know, live real-time reading city per city with uh, the map where you could actually click and get, you know, exact uh, counts per minute. And every time you saw one of these storms, I'd go to the EPA, EPA site, I'd click on a city, and we'd have three or 400 counts per minute. And, I mean, we had the floods. And, I mean, I don't know if there's any way to go back and look at those maps, but you'll see it. Backward sea formation, and everywhere there was a backward sea, we had wicked storms. We had tornadoes. We had unprecedented rains. And I really think there is no doubt in my mind that it was the excited particles um, in the air from the reactors that was causing all the wicked weather we had. And I, I don't think that this year is going to be any better, to be honest. Yeah, I want to read you guys something really quick, and I'm just grabbing this off Wikipedia. It's called the Flint Worcester Tornado Outbreak Sequence. It happened in June of 1953 in Flint, Michigan, and Worcester, Massachusetts. These tornadoes are among the deadliest in U.S. history and were caused by the same storm system that moved eastward across the nation. The tornadoes are also related together in the public mind because, for a brief period, um, Recent atomic bomb testing in the upper atmosphere, it was felt that they had caused the tornadoes. Congressman James E. Van Zant was among several members of Congress who expressed their belief that the June 4th bomb testing created the tornadoes, which occurred far outside the tr traditional tornado alley. And then meteorologists came out and dispelled such an assertion, and he retracted his statement. But here we are. By the way, by the way, 1953, the June 4th test is the biggest one that was ever done in the desert. That is the big one. That's the one that my dad was nuked in that was nearly killed on the blast. So it's perfectly correlated. It caused other tornadoes, too. F3 and F4 struck other locations in Massachusetts, Michigan, New Hampshire, and Ohio. And, you know, we're looking at this kind of stuff going on now. We know the fallout is floating around up there. Um... We're going to try to get some people on here who know a little bit more about weather and can try to correlate some of this stuff. Uh, you guys, I put a note into chat. If you guys have any questions for Ms. Milky or Kevin, just type them up for me. And Ms. Milky, uh, you wanted to talk to Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, I just wanted to say how much respect I have for you and your passion and, you know, all of the... Uh, pieces that you allowed me to put into my videos, <laughs> your rants and stuff. I uh, just, I have so much respect for you. I just, I was so happy to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much. And like I said, today's a big day. I'm getting ready to walk in the LDS right now. I'm, I'm the most scared and nervous I've ever been in my entire life. I'm getting my results from my PT scan. And, you know, I'm full of leukemia as I started this rant and rave. Who would ever believe? I would never believe in a million years. But, it, you know, this is so heartbreaking to me. And, you know, people I come across as I'm brass and I'm tough. I ain't all that tough. I'm really not all that tough. And this disease, leukemia, is so heartbreaking to me. 
you know, and it's ruined my life. And I think, you know, I speak for a lot of people and maybe my subconscious was pouring out that way somehow. Cause I'm a finance guy, you know, I'm a plaster, you know, but I just, by default, sweet are the uses of adversity. Shakespeare said, you know, that's, how I've evolved in this and when I first did those early videos I really didn't prepare them dinner and I just let my subconscious spew out anger you know and I I am heartbroken I am absolutely destroyed a lot of people I don't think people know how destroyed I am physically mentally this has ruined my life totally ruined my life and I'm going to be lucky to live and I know that you know and you know people say oh you're going to be the Rachel Carson of our era and I'm like I hope not you know, she took on the, the you know, she single handedly, single handedly, as she was proving in her in her lab at the University of Virginia that people were getting breast cancer from DDT as she got it while she was doing it and then wrote Silent Springs. You know, and she single handedly because people cared about the environment now. They loved these people like her. People had souls then. People cared about other people, cared about their children. They don't give a damn now. People don't give a damn if you're dying or if their own family members are dying. We're a bunch of self-indulged baby boomer assholes, and I hate to say that, but Fukushima doesn't prove it to us. If Fukushima didn't wake up this population, what's going to? Kevin, you know? someone is asking in chat if you think Fukushima was done on purpose, if maybe Harp was involved or a nuke in the trench or stuck. No, because you know. the earthquake, you know, the earthquake was a nine point earthquake, which is so massive, massive. And then the nuclear regulatory agencies will tell you, is I debate them. I've been in their face. I've been in Gunderson's face, you know, in the old days. As he tried to protect them, now he's anti because he can see them buck me, mate. They cannot handle a seven. A nine-fourth earthquake on a nuclear reactor is so catastrophic. There is no way in hell I can handle it. And I hear people say that's a thousand years. Once a thousand years. I'm like, oh, really? Then how come it happened in Phuket in 2005? It happened in 2000. It's not a thousand-year phenomena. And, you know, was the downplaying of it intentional? Was certain things that gone on intentional? There's no doubt. You know, there's no doubt. I mean, it's kind of like when... You know, the Supreme Court gave Bush the election. It's no doubt. I mean, there's conspiracy theories out there that have creed to them, you know, and the downplaying of this and the intentional we don't care, there's no doubt in my mind it's conspiratorial. But the actual phenomena that caused it is just the world that we live in, and it was only a matter of time. I've been saying it for 30 years. You know, it's, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen here. An F5 is going to rip through a nuclear reactor, and this that's it's going to be the biggest night near this. This this will make D-Day look like a tiptoe in the park when it happens. And it's going to happen. Kevin, do you think that it would help to try to get maybe the ACLU involved in this at Absolutely. all? Absolutely. Absolutely, because it does have a demographic of class to it. You know, what's going on in Japan, and, you know, it has a damage, like you said. Hell, everybody with a bunch of wealth, just move on down to South America for a while to protect yourself, which is the prudent thing to do. But how many of us can do that? So there is an economic, social class component to it. You know, it, it's it's abstract and it's low line. You know, I'm a social economist. I write about this subject matter my entire life, and there is a component there. There's no doubt about it. Both of you are, are just so amazing and inspiring and passionate, and you have your, your own styles. You care deeply, and, I mean, that's what people need to do. We need to remind ourselves that 90% of people still have no idea that this is going on or they're not paying attention to it the way that they should. I think it's higher than 90 Yeah, it, you know, which blows my mind, and, again, who can we blame for that? The corporate media. You know, we spend all these, like what's his name said, the best opinion money can buy. You know, how do people get their information in this day and age? Now, thank God we have the Internet, but what percent of population actually put cream? Because there are so many crackpots out there on the Internet. You know, so they take us all with six grains of salt every time we say anything on the Internet, which, can you blame them? Look at the bullshit that's out there. But when we have the most trusted news in America, the man who's going to be the Surgeon General, you know, down, M, Jim Walsh, who's an MIT expert who we put him up on, and, and, you know, Gunderson, these people who we put up on these pedestals, 
That's who people are going to believe. They're not going to believe a person like me or Miss Snoopy. Kind. They're like, you know, who are they? So there's your blame. There, I mean, it, I really think there's a lot of contempt there. I think there's an extreme amount of malice there, and I think they got blood on their hands so grotesquely. You know, I really do. They've got blood on their hands, and they are criminals against humanity. There's no doubt in my mind. And all of them. It isn't just, you know, I pick on CNN. Hey, but it's, uh, you know, when you have, I like to say, when you have a, uh, Ann Calder, that dude, comes out and says, oh, a little radiation is good for you, and these people suck that up. That is such malice, you know, intentional, criminal-type words that are so hurtful to human beings around the world that I don't think they even know what they're doing, and people listen to them. They they pay attention, and, you know, Rupert Murdoch, you got to give it to him. You know, he, one man can control the freaking world like he has for 30 years. You know, it's Orwellian. It, you know, I call it the school of more well communications, and it happened. And so if people don't know, because who's to tell them? Me and you and this milky clowns on the Internet? Mm-hmm. You know, they give us about as much credibility. <laughs> you know what people think of us? Because we are on the Internet. We're not in mainstream media circles. Well, you know, I feel like the mass awakening is coming, and and we just keep we need to keep doing everything we can to help it along. Um, Absolutely. Thank you so much, both of you, for being on the show today, and thank you, Jules, for holding my hand all week and helping me get through this. <laughs> Next, keep week. up the good work, girls. Keep up the good work. I got to walk in here right now. All right. Good I'm luck. Hey, so, talk to you guys. Yeah. Good luck, Kevin. Hey, thank Take you care, so much. Kevin. Okay, bye. Next week, we're going to talk about how much we hate the APA. We're going to talk about mutations some more and what the hell are we going to do about gardening and soil testing because planting season is just around the corner. And I'm going to try to get some answers about that this weekend. So 